Hey, hey, Tim here. It's been a while since I shared the build of my Sonex Xenos electric motor glider here, so I'm gonna give you an update. So here we go. First of all, here's a picture of the Zero motorcycle uh, motor. And here's the propeller that I'm ordering. It's called the Prince P-Tip propeller. Very efficient. With that is gonna be a sprocket. So here's motorcycle sprocket will go on that motor. Then that will interface to a belt. So it's a standard Gates belt. Then it will go onto this sprocket right here. And then that'll go onto a propeller. So I've ordered the propeller. Uh, it's a 10 month uh, backlog on the ordering, but it is coming. And uh, the uh, motorcycle uh, controls instead of the twist grip will have a throttle here. It's electric, uh, electronic throttle uh, with the throttle here. Uh, you might ask, how does this mount to the airplane? So I've got this mount here. Actually, the, uh, this will mount onto uh, the battery. Actually, the battery will be behind this, and then the firewall will be behind that. The motor mount will be manufactured by Zero. Uh, they're coming out in March with a motor mount that should interface to these four bolt locations. And then I can just, it's kind of a kit, just bolt it on and go. And here's the front of it. So the hub here will go on. And if you see, uh, you know, some bearings here, these are SK bearings, uh, SKF. And they have a life of maybe a thousand hours uh, before you got to change them out. So here we go, uh, looking at the rest of the kit. Here's the progress that I've made so far. So this item is called a stabilator, and it uh, basically is the tail of the aircraft. It's a V-tail. Uh, underneath, I made this frame structure. So if you look up underneath it, you see the frame. And that's all been riveted to here in front and back. This hinge is for the, uh, called the rudder vader. So it takes the place of a rudder and an elevator together. And it's all what they call Klee code in. So these are temporary fasteners. I've just started, as you can see here, started bending down the uh, frame here of the uh, skin, bending that down to, uh, I'm gonna wrap around the other side. I also have the wing tips ready to mount and test fit. This is a stiffener, you can see it's put in there. This will go in the end, uh, I can show you this. This skin will kind of go over here, kind of like this. And then I've got to mount the rudder vader here. This is called a rudder vader. And it's a hinge as well. And this is what it looks like opened up. This is half the skin done. So I have to bend this over and uh, drill and Clico temporary fasten the rest of it. And you can get a good look at the hinge mechanism here as we go by. All temporarily fastened in there. And here's where I am right now, uh, just flying over it. Uh, got a lot of work to do and get this skin matched up. Uh, had some dis mismatches that I got to correct. I added an air system to my shop. It's just a little DeWalt here with a, with a hose reel. So this will reach uh, all the way to the end of the shed. I've also got my parents' old stereo here. So I enjoy playing records on this 1970s stereo. You might ask, what else does Tim do with his time? I never really consider myself a motorsports person, but this is what it is, flying an airplane. Um, as president of the EAA Chapter 1250 here in Pottstown, I'm I'm a member of the Adult Eagles Mentor Program. So I'm mentoring uh, inexperienced students and, and enthusiasts on how to get their pilot's license. Here we are flying my Cessna 172, uh, which I will sell once I build this uh, airplane, once I get it flying. Uh, this guy's name is John, and he wants to learn to fly. So we went up for a flight, uh, 
one of his first flights ever in a small airplane, flew over his house and uh, gave him a good introduction into airplanes. And now I understand he wants to take flying lessons and has applied for a scholarship uh, through the AOPA, which is the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. And uh, just a really nice fella, um, really uh, technically savvy and, uh, you know, wants to see a, a better future and have some fun. Here's another fellow I met, and his name is Mike. I took him up for a ride as well uh, as part of the mentorship program. And talk about mechanically savvy person. He uh, taxied the airplane. He flew it uh, without really any incidents as he kind of gets the me mechanics of it. And he also wants to learn to fly. Um, and so the mentorship program shows you how you can do it for uh, inexpensively and uh, find some good quality instructors. Christian, so this is your first motorcycle ride outside the airport. How did it feel? I literally have my motorcycle license. Yes, you took the course and you passed it. Now, your dad has fulfilled a lifetime dream of you and he riding together. This is the first time ever. Let's keep all the rides safe and happy. So that's really kind of the, the big update here. Uh, what I'm showing here is I got a little uh, mini mill, it's called from littlemachineshop.com. And it shows you what you can do as far as drilling a lot of holes. Here's time lapse of uh, drilling holes for the, and adding Clecos. Very precise drilling of the main spar. Here's a picture of uh, drilling some of the key pieces uh, that are called clips. Uh, there's a front and back clip on the spar. And, uh, just precision drilling, uh, much more precise. Uh, maybe within a thousandths is the best I could get it. But it uh, shows you how it e it's easy to clamp something in position and pretty much hold it in place as opposed to a drill press. This does have kind of a drill press feel to it uh, with a chuck on it, but I can also do milling with it. So removing metal where required. So that's my main video here. If anybody wants to stick around for some details of uh, little pieces and parts and clamping uh, schemes that I made up to make sure everything was square, you can hang on. But other, otherwise, I thank you for watching and please subscribe. Uh, here's another time lapse of uh, drilling the rear spar. <clears throat> Actually, it's, it's a middle spar uh, in the stabilator. Uh, these holes will be used for routing pieces through these uh, through the uh, stabilator. Here's some detail uh, of the uh, how we Clico things in place, the, the one of the clips. This is the square, the big, huge square, two foot by one foot square I used to make sure everything was square before I, then I laid down this on top of it, which is actually another squaring piece uh, that is totally square. Uh, here's a remake I had to do, some too tight holes, too close to the edge. I had to remake a few things. Photo of uh, the rivets uh, that I've done. These uh, They're called blind rivets. You basically squeeze, squeeze them with a pop riveter. Here's some squaring mechanism. Again, just uh, clamping and squaring everything so that it's within, I'll say, a 32nd or even a 64th of an inch. And I had, had accumulated these squares, uh, these... Uh, Clamps, actually some of them are from my dad, uh, dearly departed a couple years ago, and I got some of his tools. So part of his tools are now uh, building other things. So I think of him when I when I build this. Uh, so here it is stood up on end, um, the stabilator frame, I guess we'll call it a frame, uh, because the skin's gonna go over top of it. You can see those holes again leading up. I can lead uh, things through. And here's some more clamping of the clips. This is a... Uh, uh, front clip, uh, actually the rear clip, and uh, how we do alignment hole alignment of it. Just everything is marked center line and and lined up with each other. So thanks for watching again, and please subscribe.
And if that wasn't enough, I got a drywall project going on. Uh, we had a flood down here with about a foot of water during the big floods and I'm re-drywalling my son's room.